Okay. Okay, I think I'm good. Well, welcome everybody to our reading labels lecture tonight. If you don't already know me or you're not familiar with my story, I'm just going to give a quick little introduction how I got into chiropractic and nutrition and then nutrition response testing, which is what we're going to talk about tonight. But, um, you know, just like most of my patients, I found out very early on that I was a consumer of the medical industry. And it was only because I didn't know anything else existed out there. So going through school in seventh grade, I knew I wanted to become a doctor right away. Like biology just completely fascinated me and I didn't think there was anything else that I ever wanted to study. So I was lucky because a lot of my classmates had no idea, like no direction what they want to do. And some of my friends still don't know what they want to do. But um, as I started going through school with high ambitions and all that, I started to have a severe um, abdominal pain condition. And so I was one of those people that tried a little bit of everything and the doctors really couldn't figure out what was going on. So as I say, I was poked and prodded. I had all these different tests done to me, but what they were suggesting started to become increasingly more invasive and also interfering with my ability to just live my life and pursue my studies. And so when I finally said enough was enough. It was, I had had three surgeries, so every two years they were cutting me open and just exploring because they really didn't know what was going on. And then after the surgeries, they would put me through hormonal treatments to shut off my ovaries because they thought it was related to hormones and that the hormones would increase the growth of it. So I am 37 and I've gone through menopause twice, <laughs> medically induced. And all, you know, finally it just got to a point where I said, how long can I go on like this? I'm, I was in my 20s, and like I said, I was pre-med, I was studying to become a doctor myself, mm -hmm. and then the very industry that I was studying to become was failing me. And so I got so sick on the medical treatments that they were giving me, that I ended up having to discontinue my undergraduate studies. And so while I was home, I just started really thinking like, is this what I wanna do? Does this make sense? And it didn't. And so always, you know, your traumas and trials and tribulations become a blessing in disguise in the end of it when you can look in retrospect, right? Mm -hmm. But um, through that time that I was off of school, I started really studying health and just really questioning, like, what does true health mean? Where does it come from? Is it accomplishable in the first place? And through my own discoveries, I discovered the chiropractic college. And I'm from um, central New York, so New York State Chiropractic College was literally in my backyard, seven miles up the street. Um, hadn't ever thought about being a chiropractor before. I was a, I had been a chiropractic patient, you know, in school. I played basketball, and I mowed lawns in the summer, and I went for pain. But my chiropractor never taught me that there's more to chiropractic than just back pain. So a lot of people say, oh, don't you have an amazing experience and it motivated you? No, I didn't have an amazing <laughs> experience. In fact, my chiropractor told me after I got adjusted to go home and take a leave because, or I don't think they even had a leave back then, Advil or something, yeah. because I would be in pain. So I'm thinking like, what do I need you for if I wanna take the Advil? <laughs> anyway, right? But anyway, I learned at the chiropractic college what I believe is the true meaning of health. I found a model that really resonated with me. And in the chiropractic college, they taught us that real health comes from within. And I think it's so important for us to acknowledge that because the medical world really isn't teaching that model. They're not teaching you that the body is intelligent, that the body can heal, that it can repair itself. And I think we need to, that's empowering to us and gives us hope and gives us options as well. So they taught us that also that there's no one shape fits all type of solution. There's no magic pill that, you know, everybody, you know, can can take and it's gonna solve everything. So that made a lot of sense to me. So fast forward, I graduate from ch chiropractic college. I'm stubborn, so I never worked for anybody. I started my own practice right away and I started seeing patients. And in chiropractic college, they had taught us that the chiropractic adjustment was powerful and taught us about all these miracle stories. So chiropractic wasn't originally intended for just neck pain, back pain, and headaches. The original philosophy was that if you remove interference from the nervous system through the spine, that the body will go back into messaging itself and go into balance and heal. And so the very early patients in chiropractic had things like 
you know, kids didn't have ear infections and their bowel issues went away. One guy's hearing came back. And so we heard about all those miracle stories while we were in school, but lo and behold, when I got out of school, who was coming to my door for treatment? Car accidents, workers, in, you know, injuries, neck pain, back pain, headaches. And I don't mean to say I don't care about your neck pain, back pain, and headaches, but that's the easy part, right? We already know chiropractic works for that. I wanted the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but my patients who were coming in for neck pain, and back pain, and headaches were also coming in with a long list of other medical things that I thought I should be able to help them with, you know, a long laundry list of symptoms. And so I really early on got a liking for nutrition and got an interest for nutrition. And so by adding that into the practice, we were able to start taking some of those more complicated cases and turning them around and having successes. But what I found is you can still use nutri nutrition in a very symptomatic or medical type of model, right? So take a pill for a problem. These pills are more natural, they're different, but it's still a pill for a symptom. And so what I found out is that I didn't have a beginning point and an end point or I didn't know what was step one and then step two and step three with my patients. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't until I discovered kinesiology, which is a fancy word for muscle testing, that I started to be able to go deeper with my nutrition patients even and get to the root of their problems and resolve even the complicated cases. Mm -hmm. And so as we did that, <laughs> you have one complicated case, they bring more of their complicated friends along with them. And so we started making a name for ourselves, like these medical mystery type patients, so a lot of my practice up north in New York, adrenal fatigue, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, a lot of your syndrome type things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so we had started having a lot of success about it. And so I just became really passionate that I wanted to fast track other people's knowledge so you don't have to go through the same, you know, years of trial and tribulation and trial and error, try this, try that, wait and see type of approach to get better. I wanted to go out and teach people that this doesn't have to be your last resort, this can be your first resort, okay? So, now I'm here in Jacksonville and you guys have sick people just like we had up in New York, and so we're seeing a lot of the same things. So, I thought some of the stuff we were seeing up there was because of our great cloudy cold weather, but it's not, it's America. <laughs> So I'm going to jump into these boards for a minute because I think that this does a really good job of explaining what nutrition response testing is and just our overall mentality and philosophy for health and well-being. So up at the top we have the picture, we have the word symptom. So tonight is a general how to read labels type of a lecture, but oftentimes we'll do a lecture on hormone balance or energy or not sleeping or those kinds of things. So let's just say for tonight, for, um, for argument's sake, we were doing a lecture on headaches, and everybody here was having headaches. Well, what I know is that your headaches, and your headaches, and your headaches, and all your rest of your headaches, they all could be from a different reason. So a headache is a very generic symptom, and so I'm going to teach you as we get going that we don't treat symptoms here. I don't treat headaches, I don't treat diseases or conditions, but my patients have those conditions. So the symptom could be caused by dehydration in your case, it could be hormone imbalance in your case, yours could be that you're not absorbing nutrition, it could be a gut issue, yours could be adrenal issues, yours could be a nervous system issue, somebody else's could be actually structural trauma or something like that. So what I need to do is find the underlying cause of that symptom. So the symptom is your body's call to action, it's the red flag, it's waving its hand saying, hey, I'm not happy here, I need help, but we connect it to the triangle. So what I know is that regardless of what the symptom is that the person's coming in with, that there's a correlating nutritional defici deficiency attached to that. And if you have a nutritional deficiency, I know that there's organ dysfunction underlying that because your organs need nutrition. Those are the building blocks for your body to heal and repair and do what it needs to do. The reason that this is on a triangle is because you can read it in any direction, right? So if you have organ dysfunction, if your organs are misfiring or not connecting properly, it's going to give you that red flag or alarm or you know bell or whistle, and there's a nutritional deficiency associated with that. So what my job is to do is to put a halt on any one of these legs because we know on a triangle if you change one of the legs, you're going to change any of the rest of the legs, right? We're getting into like 
Yeah, I'm not changing you. Do you want to know why I had a little boy today? I got him to say parallelogram. Do you guys even remember that word? I do remember. We that. like vocabulary here. <laughs> it was really super cute. Okay, so you can kind of understand if you what you eat affects your affects your organs, and if you're not eating properly, you get symptoms. So we're going to fast forward for a second in your folders because they want you to really grasp this on your own um, on your own level. So there is a little thing in here. should be right after my success, my personal story, the sugar addict quiz. So I'm going to have everybody just take a minute to fill that quiz out. And you just simply answer true or false. And if you've done it before, I still encourage you to do it again, to fill it out again, because it might have changed. <laughs> it's funny as we fill it out, we always get giggles, and then we get questions, like, what is sugar? So we even have to start to agree on what sugar really is. <clears throat> So for anybody who is listening online, any of the documents that we talk about tonight or discuss that you can't see really clearly, we will be uploading any of those documents onto our um, Health by Design members only page. So if you're a member already, you'll find a um, documents tab there. And if you're not a member, you can message us and request to be a member. It's just called Health by Design members. And so as you get finished, just total up your trues and falses, and then I'll tell you what the meaning is. Well, you really don't have to total up your falses. So did we have more than four? Did anybody have more than four? No? That's awesome. More than four trues? More than two falses. More than four falses, excuse me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some yes, yeah, some no. No, good. Did it change? Has it changed? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you remember yeah. taking this before? Yeah. You're cured. <laughs> <laughs> yes, success. Okay, so let me tell you what that means. If you answered false to four or more of these statements, chances are you're probably at least sugar sensitive, if not sugar addicted. So do we all understand sugar is addictive? And studies show it's actually even more addictive than cocaine for the pleasure responses in the brain. So what that means is you crave sugar, you might eat some sugar and temporarily feel better, but then you'll crash out and need more sugar to have the same effect. And then what it means is the more sugar that you eat, the more you want of it. And it also means that you might recognize that it's not right, but you can't stop the habit. You perpetually do it anyway. And then it makes the situation worse. If you didn't answer for more, you still could have a little bit of a sugar sensitivity and whatnot, but if you'll turn to the next page, Miss Nancy Appleton, who's a PhD, extensively researched the effects of sugar on health, and she lists here 143 re reasons why sugar is ruining your health. And so you don't have to read all of these, but I think it's interesting because all the major killers in America are on this list, all of the cancers for any body region are on this list, Hormone issues, mood issues, sleep, energy issues, they're all on here. Heart disease, cholesterol, you name it. So if you, regardless of what your number was, I still encourage you to start to work on limiting the number of carbohydrates. So those are both added sugar as well as sugars that are naturally occurring. And so... <laughs> And in our practice, um, I was going to pull out this book. This is a really great reference. This is um, Dr. Appleton's book, Lick the Sugar Habit. And we've had a lot of patients 
um, borrow this. So this is a lending library. You guys are always welcome to borrow any of the books that are behind me. Um, but this has been really, really helpful for some of our patients to really click in and understand it. And I've heard patients who've done yo-yo dieting and tried a lot of other things and then read this and it finally clicked in for them and they were able to literally lick the sugar habit. So I'll put that up here if you want. I don't know if it's on Amazon or whatever. Okay. So now up here, relating to sugar, so what if we took the headaches or the symptom off the board and we put sugar, we know that the more sugar we eat, the more nutritional deficiencies we have and the angrier the organs become, right? So garbage in, garbage out. Ever heard that old adage, you are what you eat? Yeah. Totally true. So we've got to get back to the thinking, right? We eat to fuel our body. I know we eat for a lot of emotional reasons and social habits and all that kind of stuff and cultural things, but the purpose behind the eating is always to fuel the body. So you have to ask, what are you fueling your body with? Okay, next board. See, there's not a lot on it. We're going to get all the way through this. <laughs> So with nutritional response testing, does anybody want to be my model? You've done muscle testing. Do you mind coming up? You're going to be on camera, though. So whoever comes up is on camera. I'll do it. You want to come up? Come on up. Have you ever had muscle testing done? Just that one little sample that you did that day. Yeah. That's it. So you've, heard, you've seen it. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use her arm. So this is nutrition response testing. So as she's standing here, her body isn't under any kind of stress. So if I was to push down on her arm, she can push up and match my pressure, and that's not a problem. Her arm gives us a lock, or it stays nice and solid like that. So what we do in our exam is we go around and touch or put light pressure on different areas of the body. So for her heart, for example, if there's no problem with her heart, and I just press here, her arm should still stay strong, right? However, if her heart already had some kind of stress, and I put light pressure over it, her arm would go weak. And I want to explain the reason. So you can rest, stay here for a minute, but okay. you can rest your arm. <laughs> so the reason behind that, have you guys heard of hypothermia? Not so prevalent down here as up in New York. Right. You're not at risk for it. But <laughs> what is happening in hypothermia is that your body's preserving its circulation to your core, to your vital organs, like your heart, for example, at the expense of your extremities, right? Because your heart is more important for your survival than your fingers and toes. So that's why you start to lose circulation. You get some da you know, damage to those um, most distal part or extremities. So when I put pressure on her heart, if it was already under pressure, or under, already under stress, the body's going to preserve the circulation to the heart at the expense of her arm, and now her arm goes weak. Okay. The second part of nutrition response testing is to try to figure out what nutrition that heart needs in order to repair it. So on my um, wall in my office, you're going to see all these little sample bottles hanging everywhere. And those are just little glass bottles of whole food nutrition. Do you want to grab one of those? And so we would have her hold on to something, hold it in the, your other hand. And if that's the right nutrition for that heart, this time when I put pressure on it, her, her arm would stay strong. Okay. See, you're a very good patient. You can go ahead and sit down. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. So the best way I can explain that, and that was just a sample bottle, but these little glass bottles are the actual sample bottles that we use during the testing. The best way I can explain how that works is that this is whole food nutrition. So this is standard process is a company that's whole food nutrition. So these products are not the same as just the standard, you know, synthetic stuff that you get over the counter. And that means they're alive, they're living nutrition, and it has energy just like your body has energy and so if you put this in somebody's energy field we might not be able to visualize the energy that's coming out of that little bottle but your body is is sensitive enough to sense whether it strengthens you or not so it's soup it's just the same thing as the sun coming through the glass or the windows except it's like a billion times stronger than the nutrition and, and the energy in this thing but you can feel the sun and witness it and you know visualize it right so your body's sensitive enough to, t to test that. So that's nutrition response testing. And during an exam, what we do with all that information is we come up with a design clinical nutrition program. So go back to our headache example. Not every one of you is going to be given the same whole food nutrition 
or even the same dietary recommendations. It's always going to be very individualized to your body. So there's no like one size fits all type of pill. So it's like a custom suit, right? The guys get this. So it's a custom suit for the guys and it's a bridesmaid's dress for the women, right? We all go in and we're going to look similar when we stand up in the lineup for our photographs. But everybody's going to have different neck, sleeve length, waist, legs, all that kind of stuff. So individualized to you. And then the last thing, last board here before we get into label reading. Woo, it's going to kill me. Is overall health. Remember we talked about that we're not treating symptoms. We're trying to get to the underlying cause of what is, what's going on and causing disruption in the body. And then that it's safe and natural. So safe and that it's food. So when you read our labels, and we're going to practice this after the, afterwards, it says things that are recognizable, like buckwheat and pea vine and carrots, stuff like that. So it's just food in therapeutic doses. So being safe and natural and just being food means that it doesn't matter who the patient is or how complicated their history is. They could be on medications, it could be an infant, it can be a pregnant mom. We can still work with those people, which I think is good for everybody to kind of recognize. So there's a lot of informa misinformation about supplements, and all supplements aren't created equal. Okay? So any questions just on the little demo and our philosophy of health and how it relates to nutrition and what we eat before we dive into the um, label reading. You good? Again, they're smart batch. Okay, so go to this little one that has the um, three circles on the bottom and we'll go through that. So the first thing just says what's on a label. So there's a lot of standardization on labels, just so you understand companies on their labels, but they're also being forced to put certain things on the labels just for um, regulation purposes, okay? But they also are using tricky, tricky marketing tactics. So number one, on the back, have you all seen the part of the label that says nutrition facts? Mm -hmm. And so that's where you're gonna see how much sugar is in there, how much protein, the amount of fiber, sodium, calories as well as the recommended daily allowances okay the one thing I like to say about recommended daily allowance and I don't I think you kind of understand this but I like to bring it up because even sometimes like I'll think about it and I'm like wow how do they ever come up with that system so a recommended daily allowance whether you're my size or your big mic over here or you're a little kid or you're a senior or whatever your activity level is you're a marathon runner the recommended daily allowance is the same for all of those people does that seem a little questionable have you ever thought about that sure and so also the recommended daily allowance is the bare minimum of nutrition that's needed to prevent disease. So it has nothing to do with optimizing health or keeping your body to, you know, high standards or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So for example, iodine, the amount that's on the label, is the bare minimum just below preventing goiter. Mm -hmm. So if you get that amount, Congratulations, you're that far away from goiter. <laughs> well, is that, a, I know I'm making fun of it, but is that a standard that we want to hold ourselves to? So when we start to actually think about this stuff, you need to know, right? I would say like, sometimes I upset people. I upset people a lot. Every day I upset people. But you need to know this. You know, like if you're eating the food and you're a consumer of this industry and you're paying good money, you need to know what is being put in your bodies and what you're serving your kids and your family, right? Okay, so we get away from the nutrition health facts, and then there's health claims and propaganda, right? So have you seen things that say, oh, natural? Oh, yeah. Do you know what's natural? <laughs> Give me an example of something that's natural. i put you on the spot. An orange. An orange is natural, totally true. What else is natural? Um, all natural, like strawberry. Yeah, what else is natural? Not preserved. Not preserved. Yeah. Right? Chicken. Chicken. <laughs> what do you I think of as natural? <laughs> but when we're talking about natural, you guys all just named an actual food. Oh. So when you're buying something that says all natural, are you under the assumption that it's food then? Yes. Yeah? 
So this is going to be another funny thing, but I want you to start challenging your thinking. Arsenic is natural. <laughs> is it good for you? No. no. So start questioning what that means. Natural doesn't mean anything. And we'll, I'll show you what to, re to look for that does mean it's good for you. Whole grains. Have you ever seen anything that says it's whole grain? So wouldn't we all agree that if it says whole grain, that's a better choice than like maybe say white or Wonder Bread or something like that? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to show you labels in a minute. This Trix box, mom's out there. What's the very top part of that say? Whole grains. Coated in a lot of artificial <laughs> color <laughs> and sugar and high fructose corn syrup, right? Mm -hmm. So is it propaganda? I, had, I need to go back and look because they keep changing the standard. There's something like um, a product only has to have 3% of whole grains in it for them to put that big, bright, shiny blue label right on the very top of their box. It's criminal. It yeah, is. It I really agree. should be. I, I totally agree. I have no problem. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Audience. <laughs> Do you guys, um, does everybody know that the ingredients list is listed from the highest quantity of ingredient to the lowest? So if the very first ingredient is sugar, it's got more sugar than anything else in it, or if the number one ingredient is wheat or that or that kind of thing. Um, grains you have to be careful of because they might say whole grains, but then it might say a lot of other things in there, like it's um, enriched. Enriched means they stripped all the nutrition out of it, and then they sprayed it with some kind of chemical synthetic stuff and put, put it back in to the food. Why just leave it the way it was in nature and let's call it a day, right? <laughs> well, having gluten might not be such a problem. Right, exactly. And then um, look out for foods. Avoid foods that say processed grains, sugar, or hydrogenated oils in the first three ingredients. That's a real good rule of thumb. I mean, you can avoid them all together, but if it's in the first three, especially stay away from it. And then there's the certifications, and we're gonna, I'm going to show you examples in your handout of what these look like. But you want it to be USDA certified organic or non-GMO verified, and those are actually legitimate labels. There's a lot of other labels that don't mean anything, and we'll go over that. And then you also have your serving sizes. So be careful of this because, gosh, I haven't looked at a soda label in a while. Let's say Snapple, for example, or some kind of beverage. Do you know that usually the serving size is two to two and a half servings? So they'll be like, oh, there's only 10 grams of sugar in it. But you were only supposed to eat two, drink a third or something of the bottle. So most people just slam the whole thing. And how many kids are portioning out their sodas like, oh, I gotta save half for tomorrow. <laughs> Not happening, right? No, they just check the whole thing down. So be careful of the serving size because it might be double what is written on that con written on that label. Or like crackers and snack foods, mm -hmm. the serving size might only be five tiny little crackers or something like that. Yeah. So be be aware of that as well. That's another tricky way that they make it look healthy or not as bad for you, but they hide it in there. Okay, so in that little grid in the middle, we've got food labels. So on the left side of the grid is what to look for. And on the right side is what to avoid. So what to look for, if you can pronounce it, you recognize it. So we're talking about standard processed, like pea vine, buckwheat, carrots, those kind of things, real food. That's recognizable. One rule of thumb is, would your grandma have recognized it? You know, did it, did it exist back in her day? Is it something that grandma would have eaten or recognized? Um, look for short ingredient lists. So if it starts to be, you know, more than five ingredients and a lot of long names and stuff like that, even if it's the last couple ingredients, just leave it be. And then look for whole foods in the first three ingredients. Um, here's the USDA organic label. It's a little circle with um, white and green. And then here's the non-GMO project verified. And that's, um, that's very common. You're seeing an increasing number of companies that are going for those certifications and it's very highly tightly regulated so you can feel good about foods that have those those are the two highest standards things to avoid high fructose corn syrup corn solids and fructose artificial or isolated vitamins 
and I have a whole handout on that that you guys can take home because you're not going to learn everything there is about reading labels tonight. There's a lot of tricky things that are out there, but I wanted you to have some take home things to go back and reference, maybe put it in your, you know, those little, if you use those reusable grocery bags and just tuck these in there so when you go shopping, you can go and look for these things on the labels. It's okay to spend two to three hours in the grocery store. <laughs> you just camp out there and refuse to leave until you know what's in everything. The other thing that's probably not printed in here that I want to say too is even if you have some tried and true favorites and you've label read in the and before and you are, these are things that you keep put, replenishing and putting in your pantry over and over again, you need to go back and reread them because companies will change their ingredient lists on you. If something becomes less expensive, they will change their sourcing. So you've got to continue to check up on them. Okay. And um, more than 100% of the recommended daily allowance. So we picked on that recommended daily allowance, but what you'll see, I think, oh gosh, I gotta think. My patients are always bringing me like supplements that they've bought from the store because we can test those with the nutrition response testing just like I showed you in the demonstration here but I saw one the other day bees the bees vitamins oh it was zip fizz it's a little like I think it's carbonated you put it in water and it's got high vitamin C it's supposed to be electrolytes and a little like it's natural all natural set on it right on it um energy thing and it had gosh I think it was like 9,000 percent of the recommended daily allowance of B12. And I was like, yeah, that would give you a zing, wouldn't it? Or a zip or whatever they're claiming, you know what I mean? So look at that. That's a really quick way, even if you don't understand all the synthetic isolated, you know, list of, of vitamins that are on there. If it's boasting a way high percentage, it's probably synthetic. It's not the way nature would normally deliver it in food. And so even when you supplement, you want the supplement to mimic what the proportions of nutrition would have been anyway when you ate the food. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, all different oils, hydrogenated oils, if it doesn't say non-hydrogenated or no trans fats, stay away from it. Um, here's a point that I recently read that kind of like you know, but it's an aha moment. Cottonseed oil. What does cottonseed oil come from? Cotton. So cotton is not a food. And so there's no regulation for cottonseed oil as far as consumption, you know, how safe it is, lack of um, toxic ingredients, whatever. It's not a food. Um, GMOs. So there's no research to show what a genetically modified organism actually does. They change the genetic structure and our bodies can't recognize that. It's not recognizable as food and we have yet to, to understand what the long-term effects of these foods are going to be on our health and for generations to come. Mm -hmm. And so like most things we realize after the fact, after generations have gone by and we're like, oh, we never had autism before. Oh, we never had gluten sensitivity before. You know, some of these things that never even existed, that weren't even diagnoses. Oh, we never had adrenal fatigue before. Now we're like, hmm. And then you've got to look backwards and try to figure out where it came from. And you will see a correlation with the onset of some of those diseases, indirect correlation with the commercialization of food and packaging and processing and convenience foods. Absolutely. Okay. Preservatives, natural flavoring, MSG. Um, if it says light, low fat, or low calorie, those are things that, what happens if they take out all of the fat and all the calories and sugar free, what does it taste like? Right? So what do they have to do in order for it to taste good? Add something. <laughs> they gotta add something, right? So if it's low fat, it's high sugar, usually. Or they're putting artificial flavorings and things to compensate, or you're up in the sodium. Something's going to be offset. And then if it says no added sugar, would that be a good thing or a bad thing? We just harped on sugar. I told you sugar's the evil, right? The white poison. But it could mean that it has artificial sweeteners in it. So be careful on that one too. And so. All the stuff 
that's on the front of the package, that's just marketing. That's to draw your attention and to get the consumer to give it a chance and to, you know, put it in their shopping cart. You have to turn it over. And you can't just look at the nutrition facts. You can't just look at the nutrition facts part. You've got to skip down to the actual ingredient list to understand what's actually in there. Okay, you got to read further. Okay, so the bottom, these are produce codes. Little, you know the little stickers that are on your produce that are annoying because they clog up your dish garbage disposal <laughs> if you don't take them off? I've never done that. Okay, so those numbers mean something. So, if you have a five digit code starting with a nine, that means it's organic. So nine is fine. If you have a four digit code that starts with the number four, that's conventional. So conventional is the normal, ordinary stuff. It's sprayed with pesticides. It could be genetically modified. Um, you don't, you have no idea what's in it. And it's also the biggest, brightest, shiniest, most perfectly shaped stuff that's there. All piled high with wax, <coughs> wax towers, right? When you walk yeah. in, it's impressive looking, right? Well, if you grew an apple on a tree in your yard, what does it look like? It's got dirt on it. Yeah, yeah it's got little <laughs> holes and discolorations and it's all distorted and lopsided and it's tiny. You're so proud of that apple when you pick it and eat it and it tastes so good and juicy. It's the best apple you ever had, right? That's what an apple looks like <laughs> without all the, all the fluffiness, okay? Okay, and then lastly, if you have a five-digit code that starts with an eight, that is genetically modified. Not previously studied or researched for human consumption. So that's an easy, quick little thing that you can do when you go to the grocery store. Okay, so some common misleading claims. We might have covered some of these already. We talked about if it says light, then it means that it's either reducing calories or fats, but it's probably increased things like sugar to, to make up for the flavor. Multigrain. Well, we talked about that sounds like a good health claim, but basically it just means that there's more than one type of grain in the product, and they can also be refined grains, unless the product is marked as whole grain, just flat whole grain. Natural, we got that, right? Arsenic example, you'll never forget it. Okay. Organic. So there are products out there that are partially organic, okay? So if it doesn't have the USDA certified organic, it could be just plain made with organic ingredients, and it doesn't have to be primarily organic ingredients, okay? So it just has something organic in there. Um, no added sugar, we talked about that. There's usually healthy um, sugar substitutes. And if you just Google other names for sugar, or names for sugar substitutes, um, you'll get a printout, like you can see all the things, because now um, people who do marketing know that consumers are smarter and people are starting to know that sugar is the root of all evil, and so they're trying to hide the name of it because they want you to continue to buy their product, and they don't want to spend the money figuring out how to make healthy food affordable, right? <laughs> Low calorie. Low calorie products have to contain a third fewer the calories than the same brand's original product. However, one brand's low calorie version may contain similar carry calories as the original of another product. So again, you have to compare across products. Everybody's shaking their head. <laughs> Making you angry. That's yeah. good. <laughs> Shake it angry. I want to go march on Monsanto together. <laughs> Let's start in March. Um, we talked about low fat, we talked about low carb, um, we talked about made from whole grains, that it only has to be um, in the first three ingredients or else the amount is negligible. So you always want those whole foods in the first three ingredients. Um, fortified or enriched, you see that a lot with milk, right? Enriched with vitamin D. You'll see orange juice enriched with vitamin C or enriched with calcium. Well, when it says enriched, it just means that the nutri nutri nutrients that they're claiming have been added back to the product, but they're usually synthetic. They're not whole food based, okay? So they took an originally healthy food and then started adding chemicals to it. Gluten-free. If it says gluten-free, do you think it's healthy? We've got some enlightened ones in here. Some people have been to some other classes, I think. 
Gluten free does not mean it's a health food. If you have gluten sensitivity, of course, you need those labels and all that. But a lot of those gluten free products are still snack foods. If you get a gluten free cookie, it's still a cookie. If you get a gluten free potato chip, well, potato chips never had gluten. If you get a gluten free, you know, chip or snack food, it's still a snack food. Those foods still need to be eat it, eaten in a limited quantity. What I would also encourage you, if you are gluten free, is to make sure you know what the source of the grain is because a lot of it, a lot of the replacement, the most common replacement is rice flour, but it's most often white rice flour. And what does anybody want to guess what white rice turns into? Sugar! Sugar. <laughs> the bugger about this whole thing, there's good choices of sugar versus bad choices, right? So I'd rather have you eat a mango versus a Snickers bar all day long, because at least there's some nutrition in that mango. There's none. You don't even argue with me that there's any in that Snickers bar. Because I know there's peanuts, and I know they're protein, and I really don't care. <laughs> I'm not even going to entertain the argument, right? But your body doesn't know the difference. If it breaks down to sugar, it breaks down to sugar. It has the same inflammatory, same biochemical reaction, you know, end product in the body. So that's why our goal is just to overall limit the number of carbohydrate intake in the body. That's step one. Because that sugar is inflammatory. And we all kind of understand inflammation is the root of all disease, right? So if we can do something to decrease inflammation, that's empowerment. We can prevent disease. Amen. Amen. It's still appropriate. Uh, fruit flavor, that sounds good for us, right? <laughs> Do you want to know what an example of a fruit flavored food is? Fruit loops. <laughs> Watermelon bubblicious gum. Who had it? Did you chew it? I did. Grape flavored gum. Who decided that that grape big we chew tasted like a grape? I just ate a grape this afternoon. It is not even in anything like similar to a grape. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That artificial watermelon flavor. Can you taste it in your mouth? Like just thinking about it. Not even close to what water. Who decided that was watermelon flavor? I have no idea. So just be careful about fruit flavored. If it says fruit juice, now how do you find out what that means? Fruit flavored. You've got to go to the back, skip down past all the nutrition fact and read the actual ingredient list. Mm. This is fruit juice, okay. And it says natural flavors. <laughs> what is a natural flavor? Do I have to give an example of a natural flavor? <laughs> See if I could have just stopped me. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> Are you guys all gonna go home and watch like Netflix documentaries until next Tuesday? <laughs> it's dangerous, it's really dangerous. Okay, zero trans fat. So what that means is there's actually less than 0.5 grams of trans fat per serving. So if the serving sizes are misleadingly small, and we talked about looking and seeing is that one serving size or two and a half or whatever, mm -hmm. then it could actually contain a lot more trans fat than what you're thinking. So you have to always go to the serving size. So if it said, let's do some math together. If there's two grams of trans fats in here, and there's two serving size, it's two serving sizes in there. How many grams of trans fats is it? Four. Four. We get it, right? Okay, so you always have to multiply all the nutrition information by the number of serving sizes. Here's some information on the very many names of sugar for you. I keep updating this every time I give this lecture and it keeps growing because chemical companies out there are getting smarter and they're just coming up with new names on a daily basis. So keep, again, just like your products, keep researching them, keep, you know, keep researching this list. And you can read that, but you know, even coconut sugar and things like brown sugar and beet sugar. What is the common word in those three things? Sugar! sugar. <laughs> My patients used to always make fun of me because somewhere in the lecture, I would talk about poop. And <laughs> Olivia has um, worked here over the summer. She started counting one time how many times I said that word. I'm not going to say it again. I'm going to try not to say it again. Um, in one lecture, it was hilarious. She took a video and she chopped it all up and it was me saying it like over and over. <laughs> so funny. But you need to poop there, I said it twice. Oh, That's for you, Olivia, I hope you're watching. <laughs> okay, but agave, things like that that are being 
being touted as health foods and healthy alternatives, molasses, maple syrup. I do use those myself as alternatives because there's minerals in there and there is some nutrition. So I can say there's some validity in eating it. It actually is a whole food. It's less processed, da da da, but in very moderation because it still turns into sugar. It still counts towards your total sugar count for the day. Okay, so you know I hate sugar, right? Mm -hmm. okay. This handout, and again, you um, don't have to read it all right now. We're not going to go through the whole thing. But I just want you to understand how to know if it's natural or synthetic when you're buying whole food supplements. Because has anybody heard the news ever say, like, supplements are more harmful than they are good for you? Have you heard? I mean, it's on there at least once a week, somebody's talking about it. Consumer Reports, the September 2016 version just came out with like supplements you should never ever take. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because most of the products that are out there are isolates. So they'll take, for example, vitamin E, and they'll take one portion of the vitamin E molecule out of there, and they'll call it vitamin E. But the whole complex of vitamin E has like alpha tocopherol, D, you know, D alpha tocopherol, multiple tocopherols. It's got selenium. It's got like little rings and everything in it. And so they take it apart and they call it the same thing, but it doesn't have the same effect that vitamin E from say like um, wheat germ oil would have in the body. Okay, so the body doesn't recognize it as nature. So when you read these, it's going to be really easy to tell. The vitamin A at the top. If the source given is a carrot, it's natural. If the source given is acetate or palmitate, or it's not given at all, just assume it's synthetic, okay? Vitamin B complex. If it says the source is nutritional yeast, it's natural. If it says the source is not given, which a lot of them aren't given, it's just listed as vitamin B, thiamine, riboflavin. These are names for the different um, Bs, and you can see that along the left side. Again, for the viewers, this will be posted in the document section on the members page, um, but you can see. And it's so, like, as you read four or five of them, like, you're going to get the trend. If it's a word you recognize, like a food, it's natural. If it's a really long word, like, I don't even know how to say some of these. Folic acid, some biochemist is going to give me some awful comment on this. I know it. Ter ter now, I've taken a lot of biochemistry. Taro Teroil glutamic acid. I have no idea. I slaughtered it. So if you can't pronounce it, don't do it. So again, this is something, if you use those little recyclable grocery bags, put just slip this right in there so when you're in the grocery store and you want to know because these are not only in your, sup you know, in the supplements and vitamin bottles, these are in your foods. So remember we said they're taking the wheat and they're spraying it with chemicals and adding, enriching it, enriching your lives with chemicals. So put that in your grocery bag. Okay, do you guys think you've learned enough to practice a little bit? Sure. You want to read labels? Okay, I already gave you one of the answers. So we've got three copies. Do you guys want to, well, one, two, three. Can you guys scoot together and share and be buddies? Do you want to be on your own or do you want to join a group? I'll be by myself. Okay. So we have three food labels here. Let's start with the Trix cereal. So let's look on the front there. Okay. What looks good about it? Oh, <laughs> it's really bright and colorful. <laughs> Artificially <laughs> fruit, what is that, frost? Natural. Flavored, sweetened corn. What? <laughs> Artificially fruit flavored, sweetened. It's got okay. new swirl colors. Oh, wow. It's like psychedelic. I know, I think the rabbit's scary too. <laughs> I hope General Mills isn't watching this <laughs> live stream. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the outfit. I'm like off camera. <laughs> okay, so what do we see? Whole grains. Did we fall for it? Naturally and artificially fruit flavored. So they actually didn't even try to trick you and just say it's naturally flavored. They told you there's artificial flavoring in there. Which, what does that mean? If it's artificially flavored, what is it? A chemical. Absolutely. Corn. 
So it says corn on there, but yeah. do you see your USDA organic or non-GMO or anything on there? So corn, most of the corn in America is genetically modified, just so you know. Okay. Okay. So then let's go on the back. You've got your nutrition fact label and your ingredient list. And let's just start studying that. What's the serving size? Huh. One cup. How many kids do you know that only eat one cup of cereal? <laughs> How many adults do eat this stuff and only eat one cup of cereal? <laughs> one cup. So only 10 grams of sugar. Put it for one cup. Anything else stand out to you guys? Let's look at the ingredients list. What's the first three ingredients? That's we said first three, you want all whole foods. Any whole foods in that first three? <laughs> no whole foods. How many sugars in the first three ingredients? Corn sugar, corn meal, corn syrup, Alan DeGeneres did the funniest thing one time. I think it was a new flavor of Oreos that came out for the holidays. Mm -hmm. And she started reading. It was similar to this. There was sugar. There was corn syrup. There was high fructose corn syrup and something else. And she was like, because when, since when did su is sugar not sweet enough? Like, we needed to actually make sugar sweeter. But that's the part of that addictive part, right? You need more to create the same effect. Cool. You see some crazy, scary words there? hard to pronounce stuff, but it's got a lot of vitamins, right? We've got zinc and iron and C and B, but compare that to your list of natural versus synthetic, and it's all synthetic. You didn't really touch on the um, colors. Artificial colors? Yeah. When we Does it say the, artificial color? Well, well the the red, just the when it says, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those are neurotoxic, just so you know, this is a cereal for children. So this child will probably have this for breakfast, more than one cup, dose up on sugar, plus the artificial colorings. They're neurotoxic. The kid's not going to be able to pay attention in school, bouncing off the walls, and some teacher or school nurse is going to stay <coughs> home saying that they have a label and prescribe a medication and suppress that kid's little behavior down so that they can be easy to manage, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tricks, they even told you we had tricks. <laughs> you still bought it. <laughs> so what do you think? Is this a good purchase? That was kind of obvious, right? You knew I was going to pick on you. Okay, now let's go to one that's a little less obvious. Kashi. Better choice. It is a better choice. What do you see that you like? The USDA organic. There's another big one on here that I am in love with. Non-GMO verified. But you couldn't get it just from this. So if there was another cereal that didn't have those two labels and it said organic promise, would you believe it? We don't know how much organic it is, right? So we said if it's organic, it could just only contain a portion of organic. Yeah. It's not completely organic. So we don't know what the rest is. Okay, so front of the thing is selling me. Wanting to buy that, put it in the cart. Let's turn it over. How many ingredients are in this? Three ingredients. I'm liking it. Can I pronounce everything that's in there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there a whole food in the first three ingredients? Yes. Yes. Now, do you know what I don't like about this? Natural, Natural flavor. flavor. What yeah. does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> do you know? Yeah, do you guys remember there was it. Starbucks had something about? Um, well, it was the coloring. They were using like some kind of beetle to create the coloring in one of the like syrups that they were using. Mm. But there's a lot that like insects are used for a lot of this stuff. Ew. I'm just not a bug person, so. 
You uh, might probably know that from me moving from New York down here. <laughs> I've had to call help back up many times for bugs before we can even open the office. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So I don't want to eat them. You want to see them? And I don't want to eat them. <laughs> okay, so uh, do we like this? people are eating one cup of cereal and that's your whole breakfast mm. Mm. now remember what do you do what do you put on cereal usually milk. or almond milk or whatever kind of milk now you've got to add the sugar from all of that on top of the sugar onto this oh, wow. right you know, what about the grain beetles and all the stuff that comes in the boxes I, I have stories about, about the processed foods well yeah. so we're talking about labels so we're assuming on this entire lecture before we even started with this lecture that you did a big no-no you went up and down the aisles of the grocery store instead of staying around the outside where all the real food is so the reason why we had to do this label lecture is because you went wandering in places you shouldn't have gone <laughs> <laughs> now I have to teach you how to be safe in those aisles, right? <laughs> you went in the dangerous part. <laughs> okay, so vitamins. Let's look at an actual supplement label because a lot of every, a lot of people want to take supplements. So these things make all sorts of medical claims on the front of them, right? You're gonna have more energy, more hormone health. You're gonna look beautiful. You're gonna anti-aging wow. <laughs> I want it already right yeah. who doesn't <laughs> How can it be legal? and I know well and you guys know all the stuff that's going on with trying to get understanding do you understand why that battle is so important and why the petitions go around are so important we have a right to know and a lot of people just sweep this whole topic under the rug because it's overwhelming, or what can I do? Well, everybody has a cumulative part. The voice, your voice, everybody's voice deserves to be heard. So we're going on to the nutrition facts label. There's a lot of vitamins in here. Exaggerated claims of the percentage of daily value. Exaggerated claims, more than 100%. What's the highest number on here? Vitamin B12. It's always going to be the Bs. 833%. Have you guys ever taken this stuff and had neon yellow urine? <laughs> yeah. neon yes. yellow. <laughs> you just bought yourself a real expensive <laughs> bottle of urine. You're oh, peeing all that extra stuff out. Yeah. B vitamins also are water soluble, so your body will get rid of them. Mm -hmm. The thing to know is that not all vitamins are water soluble, so you can't just pee out the excess. So if it's a fat-soluble vitamin, it's going to go in there and accumulate and take up a spot. Here, this is a fun, this is an easy way to understand this, this mega dosing. So the exaggerated percentages of the daily value and why it's important. Think of your cells. So your cells in your body all have little receptor sites on them. And the receptor sites are openings, like doorways, for nutrition to get into the cell and toxins to get out of the cell. So you need both doors open for the cell to be healthy and survive and regenerate and do its job, right? So if you take, a, vitamin D is a good example because the medical model teaches you 50,000 international units of vitamin D a week. So that's the equivalent of taking a Hummer and going in and taking up all my parking spots out front of here and all my people with electric cars and smart cars and smaller vehicles and motorcycles and scooters can't get in my building anymore, right? So in effect, mega dosing on one vitamin is going to cause other nutritional deficiencies mm -hmm. because other stuff can't get in anymore. Um, that Does that make a little more sense? Yeah. yeah. That's the easiest way. I didn't even make that up. Somebody yeah. else did and I think they're genius. So give whoever it is credit. You're a pain in the butt being live. <laughs> I'm not going to keep in my mouth yet. We will never be live streaming again. Just kidding. Just kidding. Okay, so now we say we can't just look at the nutrition label, so we've got to go down below. And what are the ingredients? This is super scary, by the way. Is there anything you can pronounce in there? Anything that says to preserve freshness. But 
they add some artificial colors and some sweeteners so the coating tastes good when you swallow it and I don't even know preservatives all sorts of stuff <laughs> Gelatin capsules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, people supplement Nox. gelatin. Take actually take the gelatin. Yeah, the Nox. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that you don't need it. Wow. Yeah. So, are we gonna buy this Energy Plus? No. With the running person on the front. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to do one thing because I didn't print out I left these labels at home and so I was rushing when y'all walked in to try to get this together I'm gonna go get a bottle of the standard process whole food um, weight um, I don't know what it is SP complete sorry standard process and um, how many people did I apologize to tonight and I want you to read that label okay just so you can get a good print hey Mike Mike I'm not doing this to sell this. I just want you to see because for me personally, this is a company that I feel super comfortable recommending because they're purists. They um they don't care if it tastes like dirt and it's hard to swallow because they will they refuse to put anything extra in there. They won't put anything that's going to compromise your health. They won't put anything synthetic. They won't put the coatings on the outside of it. They just won't do it. They'll only put the mm -hmm. essential nutrition in there. So I love them for that. They just won't compromise quality. And that's what you want. Okay. So but that's would you the, say this is good yeah. for everybody though? No, it's not. No, it's not. Because we have, that That actually is whey. And so some people have, you know, lactose issues and stuff. And then we have other stuff. So no, even if the label checks out 100%, it's still not good for everybody. So go back to our y uniqueness of this whole thing, right? Not everybody needs the same thing. Not everybody needs the same amount of stuff. Not everybody needs the same ingredient list. It's totally individual and unique to what you need. But at least you know, nobody needs any of the stuff that is on our no-no list. Nobody. Any questions that we can share with the live audience? Live audience, we're going to end the video, but you can continue to add comments and questions, and we'll do our best to keep up with that and answer that as well. Good night. <laughs>